One of the many Americans asking themselves what a Trump presidency might mean for them is Ahmed Shihab Eldin. He is a senior correspondent with AJ Plus in New York and he joins us uh, now. Ahmed, you're a Muslim American. What does a Trump presidency feel like to you? The first word that comes to mind is surreal, especially after what happened last night. And, you know, for as much as Trump has backed off uh, on some of the previous, you know, very re disgusting rhetorical remarks he made referring to Muslims and other minorities, uh, just hours ago, you know, a lot of people celebrating the fact that he took the clause or the page down on his website, uh, wherein he had, you know, said he wanted to ban all Muslims. You know, these all don't matter because even if he were to have lost, he's really changed the social fabric of this country and what's uh, allowed, what's acceptable, what can be said, what can be done without accountability. Uh, and to be very blunt about it and kind of candid, a lot of minorities, Muslims and others, feel as though their lives don't matter as much as other Americans. Um, and we're starting to see racial lines really uh, beyond the electorate and beyond politics um, start to come up in day-to-day -day life in a way that's really troubling and wor worrisome. I mean, my sister, for example, who has a five-year-old uh, daughter, uh, you know, spent most of last night crying. I haven't slept. And it's not because we're overreacting. It's because uh, what seemed like an implausible nightmare, for lack of a better word, is now uh, a really harrowing reality for many of us. Right now we're seeing protests in New York and Chicago. Do you anticipate that things are going to get uglier in the next couple of days? A lot of people expected there to be riots or more violence if Trump were to lose because of you know, the fervor and the passion and the rabid nature, quite frankly, of his supporters. On the flip side, uh, we heard Hillary Clinton give a concession speech that was, you know, very graceful and was about unity, uh, Trump as well. So perhaps that's helped to, to calm whatever violence may have occurred. But I can tell you that um, this country is, is only beginning to realize just how divided it is. I wish I could be more optimistic. Now, Trump has talked about banning Muslim immigrations. Do you think that Americans voted for him because of that or in spite of that? He was able to be a conduit to, again, what I was referring to, a lot of anger and resentment uh, that they've felt for decades now, really, and, and that I think was underlined by uh, Obama's presidency. Uh, again, it's important to note that a lot of Trump supporters were overwhelmingly white. And even though he carried more minorities than Romney, uh, this is really a, a story about Hillary Clinton, for better or worse, losing this election, uh, for as much as it is one about Trump winning, in the sense that you know he managed to turn out one particular segment of the population. We've seen since his victory, uh, people like David Duke, the, the former head of the KKK, you know, an organization that you wouldn't imagine in 2016 we would be discussing as often as we have, let alone would have the kind of platform that it has to claim, as David Dick Duke did, that they played a huge role in this victory. There were actually Muslims who supported Trump, some voted for him, some even campaigned for him. How do you go about explaining that? So I don't know. It's, it's puzzling to me that people can come and advocate for him. I can only imagine that there's something in it for them that's perhaps quite tangible. Because as we all know that, you know, Trump has said repeatedly that all that matters is winning bigly, winning hugely, uh, winning at all costs, getting revenge at all costs. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me that there's a, there's a handful of those. It's fair to say, I think, that most of the media didn't see this one coming. I mean, we certainly, certainly didn't, did not, did no. not see this one coming. Um, you know, not, no. not sure how to kind of ask this question. Is, is the press out of touch? Are we out of touch? Yeah, I mean, the level of disconnection in society, I think, uh, in America, but also, quite frankly, around the world in terms of governments and, and citizens and the relationship that they have, um, and, and whether citizens feel, you know, that governments represent them. That said, I think people were shocked by this because there is a sense of disbelief that a, that a man like this from the very early days in the primary could actually create a coalition. I think everyone underestimated, both the Republican Party, the Democratic Party and the media, the role that fear um, and, you know, anger and resentment and disillusionment, economic anxiety mixed with racial resentment by uh, white America, to put it very bluntly in this country, uh, is what elected Donald Trump. And he managed to use that as kind of a dual weapon. Really, if there's a silver lining in this, it's that uh, in the demographic of 18 to 25 year olds, uh, had their votes only counted, Hillary would have won 500 plus electoral uh, college, uh, you know, votes, and that, that essentially is, is a landslide that's unimaginable, but perhaps 
is telling in terms of, of what the future may hold. There's an odd, odd sense in the air in America. People are very unsure of what's to come, of course, not just because we don't know what Trump's policies are, he's never specified them, but um, if you look at who he's aligned himself with in the past and even today, uh, there's, there's good reason to be scared. Ahmed, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.